Well, Caitlyn Jenner requires no introduction. Tomorrow, Jenner is releasing a new memoir called The Secrets of My Life, which chronicles the long journey from Olympic champion to Kardashian clan member to becoming the world's most famous transgender person. Caitlyn Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner joins us tonight. Thanks a lot for coming on. Well, thank you. Nice to be on your show. First day. Let me welcome you. Uh, yeah, you've been running around. We're trying to find a spot for you. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll stay for Hopefully a while. Hopefully, you'll thank hear you. for a while. Yes. <laughs> I hope so. So, you've been called courageous a lot. It seems to be one of the braver things you did was voting for Trump while living in Malibu and telling people about it. What did your neighbors and friends say when you did that? Uh, they were fine in Malibu with it, but uh, let's put it this way uh, I never actually came out and outwardly supported Trump. Huh. Um, the media did that for me. Um, uh, I am live, you know, I'm on the Republican conservative side. Right. And um, he wound up being our candidate. And so certainly I was going to vote for him. Um, he looked like he would be pretty good on uh, all LGBT issues, uh, which is important, because my loyalties do not lie with Donald Trump. My loyalties do not lie with the Republican Party. Right. My loyalties and what I'm fighting for is my community, the LGBT community, and, and particularly the trans issues that are out there, because there are many of them. Um, and so that's where my fight is. And I thought Trump would be pretty good, but he's kind of disappointed me in the first hundred days. Right. Well, on those issues. So, but I guess what was so striking about it, leaving Donald Trump aside, was that this was an election with Hillary Clinton in it, who is you know, obviously strong well, on LGBT issues, took a lot of money from LGBT groups. It seems like that would be a no brainer. Why didn't you vote for her? Uh, because I'm not a one issue voter. Yeah. Um, uh, I believe in limited government. Uh, I believe in our Constitution. Yeah. Um, I believe I would rather convince the Republican Party to do a better job when it comes to all LGBT issues right. than to try to convince the Democrats to lower taxes and lower regulations and let our country thrive, um, you know, financially and economically. No, that's a, that's a really interesting point. And I thought you were going to say that. It's obvious you feel that way. You wouldn't have done it. Isn't there a lot of pressure, though, on you specifically to be a one-issue voter? And how do you respond? How do you deal with that? I totally agree with you. A lot in our community are, and they were very upset that I, you know, um, I was a Republican. And I, I said at the Republican National Convention, I said it was harder to come out as trans than it was to become out, you know, come out as um, a member of the Republican Party. Right. And so, yeah, from that down, it's been pr pretty tough. Um, but we have tremendous issues in our community. Uh, I talk a lot about it in the book. Um, uh, we have a murder rate that's out of control right now. Already this year, we've had nine trans women um, who have been murdered uh, just from the, since the first of the year. Uh, we have a suicide rate, which is nine times higher than the general public in the trans community. And um, I, I, I sometimes get very disappointed with Trump, especially when he went up against uh, Title IX and uh, they repealed Obama's equality on uh, Title IX. And Jeff Sessions has been very kind of anti-LGBT. Um, I know on March 10th there was a letter sent to him to... Uh, try to prosecute the murderers of these trans women as hate crimes, which has been done in the past, and he never even responded um, uh, to the letter, which is extremely disappointing to me. But isn't so, it yeah, there's a lot of issues out there for our community that I'm fighting for, and I want the Republican Party to do a better job. I, I wonder if it's not just enough to prosecute someone for murder. Is that not enough? I mean, since, you know, everyone's an American and all lives are equal, the lives of transgender people and the li lives of everyone are equal, Ken, why wouldn't it be enough just to Ken prosecute Buck, murder? Yeah, in 2008, Ken Buck, uh, congressman from uh, Colorado, was the first one to prosecute somebody uh, under hate crimes. Obviously, the... Um, uh, the verdict is a lot more is a lot more difficult. It's a lot tougher on a hate right. crime issue than it is on just a regular murder. And too many times, trans women who are murdered, they're almost brushed off to the side. A lot of times, they think it's ah, it's only a trans woman. You know, look where right. she was doing her. You know, make excuses, and that's not the case. We need to protect all Americans, including mm -hmm. my community. Well, so, sure, but wouldn't yeah, that it's wouldn't important that we get serious? Well, I but I agree with uh, the first part of what you said completely. It's important to protect every American. But you can put yourself in the position of someone else. If, if someone you loved were killed, 
and the murderer received a lesser sentence because your loved one was not a member of the trans community, you'd say, well, that's kind of unfair. I mean, we're all Americans. Yeah, it, is, it is unfair. But we've got, you know, we've got other issues, too. Our murder rate is just right. so high. Um, right now, we've got... Um, that I'm really concerned with kind of the next move for the Trump administration is uh, Mark Green, who's a Republican from Tennessee, uh, Senator, and he's up for Secretary of the Army. And this guy has come out with some of the most anti-LGBT statements ever, calling me a, a trans person as a disease. I right. hate to tell Mark Green I don't have a disease, okay? Um, so he called about fighting the, okay. the bathroom issue as uh, I've, you know, the Bible tells me I have to go after evil, you know, and I'm not an evil person. Okay, well, I'm not, I, I, I don't think anyone's suggesting that you're yeah. an evil person, but I, I do think there are some deep questions that people of goodwill and good faith can ask. So you've said in a, I think, a pretty convincing way, you believed you were a, a woman from early in your life, from really in the beginning. You knew that this is who you were, but you couldn't come out and express it. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but does that mean that you believe that gender is biologically determined? Because that's kind of the opposite of what a lot of people are saying. No, well, actually, a lot of people are saying it is genetic. Uh, I was born with this. You, you made a statement last time when you were with uh, Jillian Weiss. On, you were coming up with this scenario of, oh, a guy 35 all of a sudden, hey, I'm trans, and I'm going to go you know, be a woman now, and then I'm going to get federal funds for women's issues. That's totally... That does not happen in the trans community. You are basically born this way. I've dealt okay. with these issues since I was this big. Um, it's not something that's just a whim. Um, and all oh, and I, but, trans but by the way, issues. Just, hold on, just to be clear, I, was, I would never argue it was done on a whim. I don't believe that, and I didn't mean to suggest that. But I do think that there are real life issues around this question. And here's one of them it has to do with sports, something that you know obviously very well. A transgender woman just won a major weightlifting title. Yeah. And some people said, well, this is someone who has a massive physical advantage over the other entrants in that contest. And that seemed like a real thing to me. Uh, we're kind of getting off the subject of what I talk about in the book, because the talk about in the book is right. about my journey. But of course. to answer that, um, the Olympic Committee is way ahead of the rest of the world when it comes to dealing with identifying transgender issues and competing. Um, all the way back when I was competing in the 70s, all the women had saliva tests to make sure their DNA that they were female, because we had the East German women and, and uh, the oh, Soviet yeah, remember, women yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Well, since then, there has been a lot of kind of gender nonconforming. We don't quite know where they fit in into the athletic world. And the Olympic Committee has done 20 years of studies on issues of hormone levels, of, of whether you need gender confirmation surgery, what, what can you do as a trans person to be able to compete as your authentic self. Right. And they've come up with guidelines. You meet those guidelines, you can compete. And obviously this woman did. Do you think yeah. it's fair to the yes, other girls? Yes, I think it's totally competing? fair. The Olympic Committee thinks it's fair. I'm fine with it, yes. Great. Yeah, because there's no uh, issue, you know, no big advantage. There's no, well, there's, a, of course, a no. physical, in that case, there was a big physical advantage. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not going to get into all that kind of stuff. Okay. Physical that okay. has nothing to do with it. And in fact, I think, I'm pretty sure that with the Olympic Committee, you don't even have to have gender confirmation surgery. It's just how long you've been on hormones, how long you've done this and that. So, yeah. Okay. So, this to is my final question. Because this is a subject that's evolving, I think, pretty rapidly for a lot of people, and that may change after your book comes out, but do you think it's possible for people to be people of goodwill, people of faith, people of generous spirits, but to be confused at least or baffled and say, I'm not exactly sure I understand this, but still be good people. They do not understand gender identity. They understand sexuality. Right. You know, the old saying is sexuality is who you sleep with. You right. know, gender identity is who do you go to bed as. It's a totally different subject, and you cannot compare sexuality and gender identity. And it's a hard thing. Honestly, I've been fighting this war for the last couple of years, and I don't even think in my lifetime most people will get it. But we need to bring this subject forward. Why? Because of the youth. And that's what I talk about in my book a lot. I don't, I'm fine. Everything in my life is good. I've been very lucky. But what I'm fighting for is the next generation coming up so they can, uh, they can have it easier for them. So right. um, that's where the fight is. I mean, with our suicide rates and all the problems that we have, 
Yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. And a lot of trying to un for people to understand the issues. Right. Caitlin Jenner, thanks for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. My pleasure.